Hi, everyone. My name is Tina Cowan, and uh, I am very happy to welcome you to this talk with the filmmakers. Uh, these filmmakers are part of our Nordic Shorts program for this year's Nordic Lights Film Festival. The Nordic Lights Film Festival is part of the National Nordic Museum's programming. And um, this year, of course, we had to make this all virtual. But we are very grateful that despite that, we can offer this talk to you and you get to know these filmmakers and their films uh, from the comfort of your home. Uh, we, we are also very grateful to have Amanda Dockstader here to moderate this talk. And you are many of you are familiar with Amanda, uh, but she is Barbara Osher, Endowed Chair of Swedish Studies in the Department of Scandinavian Studies at the University of Washington. And one of her main specialties is Scandinavian cinema. And she her current book project explores the intersections between popular film melodrama and Scandinavian art cinema in the work of Danish film director Carl Dreyer. And she has published on representations of ethnicity in contemporary Swedish cinema, cinematic representations of childhood and, and the family in the Nordic welfare state and issues of class, race and ethnicity in the globalizing Sweden. So we are very uh, grateful to have you here, Amanda, and I'm going to uh, hand this over to you. But first, a big thank you to our filmmakers, uh, Sarah, Osa, and Katja. We are very fortunate and grateful to have you here, and I hope you all enjoy this uh, talk. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Stina, for inviting me to be a part of this panel. It's a real thrill. Um, I remember the last, going to the Nordic Lights Film Festival last year, uh, downtown was kind of the last um, in-person, like 100 people event before the pandemic shut down. So it's with a lot of sort of nostalgia and um, a lot of um, heart that, I, that we're here today. So I'm great grateful to be able to be with you um, and to invite these wonderful directors virtually this year and get to talk to you. I'll just go ahead and do a very short introduction of each of our directors and then I'll ask them to sort of introduce themselves and talk a little bit about how they came to this project that they featured um, for that you've watched in this um, festival. So our first director is Sara Margareta Oskal. And she started as, as an actress and holds a PhD in performing arts from Oslo National Academy of the Arts in Norway. And she, her research deals with Sami humor and gesture tradition in Yoik storytelling and contemporary stage expressions. She's also a screenwriter and a poet and her literature has been translated into many languages. In 2016, she was nominated to the Nordic Council's Literature Prize with the poetry book and excuse my North, this is North Sami, is that right? Um, <laughs> or tireless words. She had her film debut in 2015 with the short um, Aurora Keeps an Eye on You and that's Gwosas Einleidadu. Um, and this was left a very strong impression with critics with seat, and was also um, screened in several prestigious international film festivals. Her second um, short as well, Beiva Nieda, or Daughter of the Sun, premiered in the Sydney Film Festival in 2018. And that was also featured in um, one of the previous Sami film festivals featured, featured by the Nordic Film Museum. Our second director here is Katja Korhonen. Um, and she's a screenwriter director based in Helsinki, Finland. She has a master's degree in screenwriting and she works in film and other media content as well. She's a writer and director, and she's been involved in projects from short films to music videos to uh, video game intros. Um, and she's writing her first feature film at the moment. Um, so I'm Listening, which is the feature, or the short film that we watched for this film festival, is, your, is her first fully financed short film, um, which you've both written and directed. And before that, she's been a part of several other projects and smaller indie short films that have been screened in local film festivals. And I believe you also have a background in the theater, if, if I'm not mistaken. So maybe we can talk more about that as well. Our third director today is Osa Jörlifsdottir. 
right? <laughs> and she's an Icelandic writer and director, born in 1984. She graduated from Columbia University Film, the MFA program, with her thesis, Ost Ostersaga, or Love Story. Mm -hmm. um, and she's a 19, or excuse me, a 2013 finalist for the Student Academy Awards there. After her critically acclaimed first feature film, The Swan, which, pre which premiered at TIFF at, um, in 2017, Osa is now in production on her second film, which is an adaptation of the novel Reply to a Letter by Helga um, Bergsvin Birgisson. And Osa is an Icelandic writer and director. Um, yeah, this got pasted in twice, so I'm just going <laughs> to... Okay, so let's, let's push this over to you all. I'd love to hear just sort of generally how you came to make the project that um, you are screening in the film festival. Maybe we could start with you, um, Katya, about that. Yeah, okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Katya, the writer and director of the short film I'm listening. And like uh, Amanda said, I'm from Finland, Helsinki. Um, well, uh, this was my first like fully financed uh, short film. Before that, I had been doing a lot of like indie films and uh, like that 48 hour films and all of this. So this was a completely uh, new kind of project for me because I have been doing things like let's grab a group of friends and uh, do a short film in a weekend and this um we had to do a whole lot of uh, planning and and everything it was uh, a lot of new stuff for me but yeah um uh in uh, finland um uh, finnish film foundation yle the broadcasting company and avec um they had this um kind of um competition i should say um uh the, in where you could send uh, um uh, short film idea with a team of a uh, one night stand and you could go like thought of the, the team any way you wanted and I kind of got this team of a uh, night radio host because there is a famous um, night radio host in Finland which uh, uh, called Pekka Sauri um, who did this night radio hosting uh, late 90s early 2000s and it was a show where people could just call and like whatever they had in mind they could just talk to him and you know anonymous and uh, ask questions or get a load of their heart hearts or whatever and people who who called there had there, he got all kinds of like prank calls but also a really serious topics like uh, suicide drug abuse uh, everything um so the team ranged and he was really popular the show was really popular in finland so I got kind of like this idea that uh, we could do a little bit like a dramatic interpretation of, you know, a one night in a booth of a night radio host. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Thanks. Um, maybe Sara? Hello, my name is uh, Sara Margaret Oskal and I'm the director of um, COVID side effects. Um, I uh, participated in a project announced by International Sami Film Institute in Kautokeinu uh, during the lockdown in Norway in March, um, almost a year ago, they had this project challenging us Sami filmmakers to make a COVID-19 film with um, uh, a small crew, uh, limited um, uh, day of um, making it a very small amount of money and um, and so we ended up making this covid side effects film mm -hmm. and uh, yeah and it's touring now in festivals <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh, it's only five minutes and yeah three actors and yeah <laughs> <laughs> wonderful and osa how did you come to to make your film. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, so I'm Ausa Hjörleifsdóttir and I am the director of Last Dance, um, which is a movie about, uh, I guess, the end of the world and also the end of love where it kind of combines this climate emergency topic with 
a relationship ending. And I basically, I was contacted by this curator called Adelina von Furstenberg, who, who had been commissioned by the UN to uh, put together like an 11 film um, collection from all around the world on the subject of the climate of climate change, which then we called climate change, but now is, you know, I guess more called climate emergency um, because it just keeps getting worse. And um, and so this was maybe 2019 that, I, that the, that the or 2018 even, that, that the first sort of, that I was contacted and started to think about this. And so we had like a certain amount of minutes and and a certain budget to work with. And I just, yeah, it's actually the first time that I do mostly, most all of my other films have come, you know, have started somehow started with me, you know, and then, and then you just, I mean, I mean, they have been adaptations of books, two of them, but, but mostly it's been something that I've started to create, but this was the first time that, you know, I had like a commissioned, commissioned task and, um, but it became very dear to me very soon. And, and yeah, and now it's, it's, it's touring. The whole collection is kind of touring the festival circuit and also the, the individual films. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm curious sort of how each of these smaller projects, it sounds like they were each sort of commissioned externally and maybe prompted you all to run down aesthetic channels that you might not have otherwise explored, but I'm curious how um, each of these projects fits into your larger interests in terms of filmmaking or other kinds of creative work. Um, and Ausa, I'm sorry that I pronounced your name like a Swedish. Oh, What's that? I, like, I like it when you say Ausa because okay. it's like Swedish for the, yeah, it's, it makes <laughs> totally, I totally answer to that. <laughs> okay. So the, the question I would, I, I'd love to hear you all talk more about is sort of how this relates to your other interests, uh, other filmic interests, either before or your future projects. And maybe we can just sort of reverse back through and start with Ausa. Okay, yeah. Um, I keep making films about love somehow, or like <laughs> relationships or lo like love. I mean, this what my first feature film, The Swan, was not technically a love story, but, um, but it there's still a nine-year-old girl in it that's very kind of you know, she's kind of thinking about this theme a lot, and she does have a crush on an, on an older man, and it's a bit, but 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 like the, yeah, definitely my thesis film from film school, which is called Love Story, and also my second feature that I'm now in post production of. I'm, that's also, it is that is definitely a love story, and um, and so, I was a little bit, you know, when this idea started to form in my head of you know this uh, this this relationship that's that's ending um, and, and that sort of a parallel story to our world that is ending or nature that is, you know, sick and dying and, and needs our help. This was something that I was like, oh, Ausa, come on, you know, you can, <laughs> you can do, you can think about something else, you know, it doesn't always have to be couples having, you know, difficult discussions in cars driving somewhere, but, but somehow it keeps, it just, you know, you just have to, you know, you also just have to write what what makes sense to you and what like you know what 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 comes to you. And this story really just came to me like it was just very clear suddenly. It was like you know sometimes you have a hard time with figuring out story or where it goes or where it begins and ends. And but the, in this one, it was really it somehow was very clear very quickly what the premise was. I think that um, um, you know. I'm, I'm certainly like in my films, I'm very interested in, um, in just the, like the nuances of our emotional life and how cinema can be, you know, because I actually studied literature before I went into film and some, and sometimes I feel like in cinema, there's this tendency to sort of simplify characters, emotional life, because somehow you need to have like a want and a, go a goal and an obstacle. And then there's an ending and, and there's somehow there's something in just you know, the way that a lot of films are structured and the way that I think we think about cinema, that sometimes it's like, I think there's a tendency to, to, sim yeah, to simplify the emotional experience of characters or to think that there's not room for as much complexity as there is in novels. 
um, or poetry. But um, but I don't think that's true at all. And I think actually that the camera is like a really great uh, tool to capture all the different kinds of, you know, all the millions of emotions that can go through your mind, millions of things that can go through your mind in like 10 seconds. And if you have, you know, if you're working with amazing actors and you can try to see that happen, you know, on screen, it's so profoundly moving and interesting. And that's certainly one of the reasons why I, I even was sort of drawn to to go into film, um, to take the leap from from literature into film, and so, so this kind of like these kind of stories that are that are driven forward with you know that are driven forward by by characters and their emotional lives is something that certainly is something that I can't even if I try I can't stop <laughs> I can't stop telling those kinds of stories somehow, and um, and that's that's definitely the case in in this film also even though it has like a larger a larger context as well, which is the climate climate emergency. I think that was a really striking part of your, and you, you all haven't seen each other's films, is that right? Yes. Okay. Well, you'll have to watch them because they're all wonderful. And they have these wonderful sort of intertwining. They all have relationships. There are lots of endings in them, endings of relationships, endings of um, the world, right? Um, but I really appreciate it in Last Dance, the way that the, the complexity of the relationship between these two people was sort of mapped onto these amazing um, and uh, sort of um, beautiful and disturbing na nature images with a huge range of sort of shot scale. Like for this short five minute film, you have everything from drone shots, right, to in extreme close-ups where the focus is just racking in and out. And the, the way that you combine them was really, really beautiful and um, compelling and in such a short piece as well. So really, um, I, I'm glad that you had the, the outside impetus to map ecological questions onto this personal relationship because it was really, really beautiful and interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so um, Sara, would you like to talk? A little bit more about how this project, um, the COVID side effects, fits in with your larger work. I'm also interested in relationships, and um, but this is actually the first time I use humor in films because I've been doing humor on stage, mm -hmm. digging into unpleasant uh, topics, taboos on stage, and. Um, now in this film i use humor even though it's a very um serious topic and situation we are in i find or i think we have to al allow us to use humor mm -hmm. to survive <laughs> mm -hmm. and so, so so yeah and i have also been brought up with that philosophy that even though there is bad things going on, you have to think, you have to believe that it's not that bad, that it can't be good for something. So yeah, it's a, yeah, a mindset that I, I've been, I, I'm brought up with. I really appreciated the the sort of play with the side effect, like the side effect being both something negative and then something positive. And I ha I just have to say, like, I laughed out loud so hard. Like, I've never seen, um, you know, without giving too, mu too much away in the film, I've never seen a, a, an erotic scene where people are scurrying so fast to put on clothing. It was just like, it, made, it was hilarious. And then like the, the huge cringe worthiness that we're like, a lot of people are experiencing these days with like, oh my gosh, did I leave my computer on? Have I muted myself? Have I like, and it's just, yeah. And, and uh, there was so much sympathy for everybody in the room and in the other room. And yeah, it was just, um, beautiful and, and charming. <laughs> um, so Thank you. you. <laughs> and um, something that I think we can, a lot of people can sort of sympathize with. Um, um, and so you, you've you worked with humor, you said you worked with humor on, on stage, and I know that you're some, some of your research is with that, but um, the film um, 
that you showed, that we've shown as well, I'm sorry, the um, Daughter of the Sun, for instance, is a very much more a serious film. And, um, and so I'm curious what you, whether your projects in the future will, will be more sort of dram dramatic or like mm -hmm. what kind of projects are you working on in the future? I'm working on a, a feature film, a love story. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's a contemporary love story uh, between an artist and a reindeer herder. Mm -hmm. So um, it's dealing with uh, uh, different uh, topics like um, dilemmas, whether you should stay or leave the traditional society how is it to return to a traditional society yeah and um i'm also writing a drama series and that is also about a couple but this time is the topic um divorce from a sami perspective so yeah Wonderful. So I, I'm interested in, in in relationships, and I'm also. My aim is not to show them how to say the political view, or they. Uh, but of course, when making a Sami story, it's hard not to become political or lift social issues, or yeah. But uh, my aim is to tell stories about uh, universal themes from a Sami perspective. So, so people can mirror themselves and get emotional, get touched and yeah. So that's my, my, yeah, why I'm making films, films and it's making film. I can use Sami language. There is no, not a problem. That is not a problem using a minority language because audience is used to underlines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Uh, underlining, no, under, yeah, underlines. Yeah, Sub that's right. Subtitles? Maybe? Yeah, Sub 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 no, subtitles, I mean. Subtitles, subtitles. Yeah. yeah, subtitles, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Great. So, Katya, would you um, love to hear more about how this project fits in? You're, you're writing a feature film project, right? So. Yeah, uh, well, one of the large themes that I've been drawn to lately uh, revolves ar around change a lot. Um, uh, it's also the large theme in the feature film I'm writing. Uh, change is just fascinating to me because it's so hard. It's, it's so hard. Uh, you can think about the changes, where to go, uh, how to change your life, blah, blah, blah. But actually doing it and having the courage to change things if if something feels wrong, uh, having the ability to like do things even though you're afraid to. So change is a big theme. I like to. I don't know why it draws me. It just draws me. Maybe because it's so hard, and you can like get such good drama out of it. Um, uh, and I I love characters. I I just adore characters. Um, that's why I actually I I one of my hobbies is live action role playing. Uh, that's why I do it also because I love characters. I love going into different kinds of characters. Uh, I, I I I I love writing about relationships, but my relationships are usually not the most traditional, uh, not the traditional love love or. Uh, it's more like unconventional uh, brotherly love or sisterly love yeah. or unconventional unconventional mother-daughter kind of <laughs> relationship. But yeah, uh, one of the things I just love is the characters and, and how I can make them change. Mm -hmm. Like the one of the most classic arcs of a character. Mm -hmm. How would you describe the characters in I'm Listening? Or what was the sort of inspiration? Or um, They're beautiful. Like the two main women, they have this sort of 
you get the sense that they're like what at one point I was thinking like is this a a sort of mirror of someone in the future is like her future self or is this you, there's all this like beautiful speculation about how these two women actually like what they've experienced in the same way or who they are or how they're what they how they've you know the main question is like have you lived your life the way that you wanted and whether each of these women could say yes or no or mm -hmm. so what was your sort of when you were thinking about characters in this short yeah one of the things I wanted to kind of while writing it because the the women uh, both of the women are about the same age but they kind of have lived even though you cannot tell what kind of lives they have actually been living because it's it's a short it's a 12 minute short so we cannot tell their history but still um uh, have they lived their have, have they lived their lives the way they wanted to and and if the world would end now would they be satisf satisfied about it and uh miria the protagonist um she has been doing the night radio for years and she ha has been listening to people's problems people talking about their problems for years and she has kind of uh, gotten uh, too used to it too used to all the negative things and and uh, her life revolving around the, the problems of other people's so she hadn't had like a chance to reflect her own life mm -hmm. the way she maybe should have and through the conversation through the dialogue between the other character Aya she kind of gets um, kind of like the, the a small catal catalyst of uh, something that may be going to change in the future so um they are kind of like mm, sort of like mirror images of each other just because you know the the whole attitude towards um if if the world would change the world would end now um would you be okay with your life and and what would you regret or would you be afraid or etc yeah so kind of like mirror imaging mm -hmm. each other mm -hmm. they really all of the the acting in in each of your pieces was really strong so maybe we could just sort of open up the question of how you work with actors how you cast do you have actors that you work with frequently what's the sort of process in terms of um maybe for this this project or just in general maybe like, Elsa, would you like to, or I, I can just open it up and you can raise, I don't need to, sometimes with the Zoom, it's like, it's easier if I call on people, this is like the teacher in me, but um, I'd be happy to just leave it open and have, have you answer on your, like, whenever you feel like saying something too, so I don't know what would be easier. Um, if you start? Like, yeah, okay. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I'm, I think it's one of my favorite, I'm sorry that eating, I'm, like I'm actually pregnant and I always have to be eating stuff and this is maybe one of the good things about zoom panel discussions that you can you know you can be <laughs> you can be snacking and um no I I'm um I the two act two actors in last dance they are actually the two actors that then you know are the lead the lead actors in my in my feature that I'm currently editing um, and Thorvaldur, the guy, he also was in my first feature film, and and so we I worked so I worked worked with him a lot, and um, and but but generally I spend a lot of time in cap, casting and just really trying to find the right, um, you know, it's almost like I find casting to be so to be so important because it's sort of like, you know, it's almost like choosing a you know, life partner, or maybe it's not, maybe it's not that serious, but it's still, it's like you, you need to, you need to get the right, um, it's, it's such chem, it's such a strange chemistry, you know, making a film and actors bring certain elements and certainly they can, good actors can do so much and they can bring very different, they can change and they can do all kinds of, um, uh, they can, they can bring, they can, they can be, you know, like, different kinds of spice spice but but I also um I just gen I think I think generally I spend I spend a lot of time in casting and then I spend a lot of time talking with the actors just about the the um, you know the emotional um you know journey of the characters and um but but I you know I 
I think working with actors is one of my favorite things in the world to do. It's like, the, those are the moments where I'm just like, yes, I have the best job ever. <laughs> and, and I think that it's so rewarding and it's so, it just like, it makes you remember that, you know, you, you know, you can sit and write and plan things in your head. But then once you have the actor on board, it's like, suddenly you have blood throwing bl blood, like flowing through this body that you're trying to create. And it's like, it becomes real. And it's really, I just, you know, I just l love that process. Um, but I just tried to, I think, you know, I think that maybe in the beginning, I thought when I was younger, I thought that all actors liked to talk about the, you know, the character's emotional journey, you know, endlessly somehow, but then, you know, the more you, the more actors you get to know, and the more you, more different kinds of project, projects you do, you see that actors are just like, they're just like people, and I mean, you know this, Sarah, since you, you, you have actually, you are, you are an actor, so yeah. I, feel a bit weird. I, feel, I feel a bit weird talking about actors, like, you know, but, but it's like, they're just, they're just different, and, and I have, um, like, last summer, I spent a long time I, I went to I took this Michael Chekhov course or like I took a few lessons lessons in this Michael Chekhov technique because I had I was working with an actor that I just could see that I felt like I needed a more just physical kind of approach you know that it wasn't so it didn't have to be so intellectual that it was actually uh, you know better to just find more physical uh, physical um you know so solutions to the or a more physical approach and basically for those of you that don't know it's michael the michael Chekhov technique and again i'm sure sada can tell you more about this but but it's i guess in theory it's this thing that you that you can you have that characters are either driven forward by their they're either thinking you know feeling or willing which is more like a physical um more physical types and you're either driven forward by your head or your heart or like your libido or something, you know, that you have these, and as an actor, you can, if you know which which your character is, it can be very helpful. And I think even, I can't remember what movie that is where Jeremy Irons plays twins, and then he, he plays two different characters, identical twins, and then he, and then one of them is faking that he is, you know, um, posing as the other, but you can still see that this is the other twin. And it's really, it's amazing, you know, because you can just see, no, 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 this isn't, this isn't twin A, this is definitely twin B. And he said that this was the key behind that, for example, this, you know, that one of them was like here and the other was drawn by this, by this part of your, you know, body. So I've talked a lot about the Michael Chekhov technique now, but, but basically, um, I just love working with actors. It's like, but it's a, I think it's, I think you just need to approach it like, you know, you approach people, you just, you need to feel, you just feel them out and see what, what's helpful or that's kind of how I, how, how I feel like, how I feel about it now that you do, it's not, my job is just to not like impose my theory onto things, but sort of see what, see what, what works, you know, for, to make the film that, that we want to make. Great. Thank you. Sara, maybe you have insight yeah. as an actress as well. <laughs> as well, excuse me. Yeah, well, actually, in, in that uh, COVID side effects, I ended up acting myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was so lucky to have, to get two of the best Sami actors in the, the in the film, Mikkel Gop, who is known from Pathfinder, and Svade Porsanger. And I've known them for many years, been acting with them on stage and also in films. So um, that was... Uh, that was we didn't need to build up that, um, what is that in uh, English? When you trust somebody, the but, trust, or... because we, yeah, because uh, we know each other and uh, because I think that is really important that you have this trust as an, um, this trust between the director and the, the actors when working. And well, casting, it's, it's, um, it's exciting. And sometimes it's also oh, scary. Have you made the right choice or, and casting that my first short film, I had so problems finding the little boy and I haven't been, I hadn't been working with children at all, directing uh, uh, children. 
and the producer says, oh, Sarah, you have to find the boy uh, because we're uh, running out of time. We are uh, shooting soon. And, and I was like, oh, how to do this? And then suddenly one day I was like just um, visiting um, or, or fetching my daughter from a house that I have never been to. And I knocked on the door and the door was opened. And then I see <laughs> there is my little boy. <laughs> No, but I had to, it was a long way of, um, again, uh, getting him to trust me, getting to know him. And uh, yeah, so yeah, but it's casting can happen all of a sudden. You just find your your actor. So interesting. Be open, (laughs) open minded. (laughs) That sounds pretty magical. Uh, Katya? Did yeah, you- well, uh, yeah, this um, was actually the first time I felt like I could use uh, energy and time to actually work with actresses, uh, to actually rehearse before <laughs> and talk with them about the characters. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was a joy. Um, Mariana, who is playing Mirja, uh, the protagonist, I had seen her in some films and I loved how she could kind of like uh, say lines that kind of are absurd, but she can still convey them that I believe that she is talking like that. So that's I, I kind of knew that I wanted her to be Miria. Uh, and we we just called her and hey, can you come and meet up us? And and it was that. And then after that we um uh, started looking like a partner for her, which would be different, but still uh who could like work work well together. And then we found Sari who plays Aya and it was kind of like mm, yeah, well, because this was my first I, I don't want to say professional short film, but still I, I'm going to say professional, even though the the previous ones were too, but still not in the same, uh, like, like I, I, in this I could actually give the time and energy, but it was kind of at first intimidating to work with these actresses who, who have had a career much longer than I have. But, but after I kind of like, got into my character as a director after being like the character in a character of a screenwriter. Mm-hmm. Then I started to get into the character of a director. And I was like, okay, this is my film. I know what I'm doing. And, and, you know, we are here to work together. I don't have to be intimidated by this. And then it all kind of started to get better, but I loved working with both of them. They are such professionals. So it was just, I, I said something and, they did it. <laughs> it was easy for me. Yeah. <laughs> I would also love to to hear what you all have to say about editing because in each of each of your films, like again, and these are really short, short, short films, but they they're each really nuanced and in very different ways in in terms of the editing, like both in terms of. Um, and I I feel like with the pandemic, anytime I watch a film now, I'm hyper aware of people in spaces or like how much space or how space is sort of conveyed and um katya in your film the way that you had first of all i was like oh my gosh you can't get a band there's they're too close together in the in this like small space but then you you know you edited the edited the um the sort of shot reverse shot at the beginning as if they're they're um, um they're in the same they're in the same physical space but they're talking in different spaces and you sort of alternate through that, which was really beautiful. And then um, um, Sada, you have the two spaces on, you have the screen space and the, the, um, uh, the characters and then what's happening in the room and then the sort of frantic, sort of really quick montage right at the end of this sort of frenzy, which was, was great. And then also the, the way that you sort of combine this huge variety of shots. And so I'm curious, uh, like the, the scale, um, um, especially also in your, your film was really extraordinary. So I'm, I'm curious how you work with editing. Like, was this part of the, um, 
you know, is this something that you, you came, at what point do you start thinking about which, you know, what kind of shots or like, is this part from the beginning? Mm -hmm. or is this something, where does it come in or what kind of cinematographers are you working with or things like that? Yeah, I think, well, sort of thematically, I think that, um, or this, you know, when I started to think about just the, the directing of the film in terms of the shots and what the shot list would be, what, what it would look like. And when you, you know, I was saying earlier that I'm interested in the, you know, in our, in people's emotional lives. And I, and I think also because I think that our emotional lives can be really epic, you know, for us they are, and sometimes even for other people, but, but, and there's something, sometimes when you see, you know, there's a movie about characters and emotions that, you know, it's called like, you know, emotional, lyrical, or, and, and you think, you start to think like close-ups and small and, um, you know, nothing much happens, but it's very endearing and you're kind of close to the characters. But I, I think that, I think that if you're, if you're a person and you're going through something and, you know, oftentimes, you know, for better or for worse, you know, it's like our emotional lives are totally epic and they're mm -hmm. on a very large scale. So I think that I think that's why I like combining these, combining epic shots and then very intimate shots because I, I feel like there's a nice tension there. And, and I mean, thematically for this film, I think that it's also that, you know, when I started to think about climate change, it was like, you know, why do we, why do we know in our minds that this is an emergency and why do we, you know, why do we hear it and we hear it on the news and we know what we have to do sort of, but we also just don't, we don't like feel it um, somehow. Or like, I think a lot of people don't have the, or maybe it's changing, I you know, but, but I, and, and I can speak for myself also that I, I, you know, I didn't have like the emotional connection to it. And that's why I decided to take something like break, like a breakup, because that's something that a lot of people have gone through. And a lot of people are certainly connected to on a very emotional level and, connected to it here and, you know, trying to say, well, if you can connect to the, you know, the, this world, this dying world in that way, that, that would be, um, that would be a good thing. Maybe that would lead us, get us somewhere, but, um, I'm getting, I'm getting off track because you were talking about editing. Yes. Yeah, so, so basically <laughs> I, I, I edited all of my films in school myself and I even sort of took a round of, in this one, even though I worked with a really amazing editor, like a professional editor here in Iceland. And we didn't have a lot of money to make this film, but um, early on, we decided to to invest in in this guy and like um, but, um, work with work with him on this. But but I think I usually think I think I sometimes even think too much like an editor, like even when I'm just thinking when I'm thinking about how the film is, I start to really see it as an edit and and I remember, you know, in my very first films, my shot lists would be like editing plans, you know, and then there was this really experienced cinematographer that I was working with in one of my like first year films. And he had done like you know, so much more than me, like you were saying, Katya, about the actresses that have so, so much more experience than you. He was saying, you know, you, you also don't have to, like, sometimes it's good to just make shot lists like a director and not like an editor. <laughs> you know, you can, let let shots live longer and not necessarily i mean it's good to have a plan but you also just need to cover the scene and all that so mm -hmm. i am um, i just i guess all of this is to say that i i think about editing from very early on somehow and i think that i think that is good and then you need to sort of let go of it also and, and think like a director like that cinematographer said but but it's so, I think editing has taught me more about directing than many other, many other things, you know, because when you're in the editing room, you can really, you can, you can see what you, what you should have done or what you, <laughs> you could have done better. Uh -huh. um, but in terms of the shots and you were asking about cinematographers, yeah, I, I, I think that's also just like, I tried to find people that that, that speak the same language and that are kind of interested in the same kind of filmmaking as as me because it's a bit like it's like with casting it's like if you speak the same language it's so it's so great and you can really uh, you can you can learn so much from each other also. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. Right. Well, editing is like, um, the, um, I don't edit myself, but while, while we start with that, then it's like you are once again telling a new story because you tell a story when you write mm -hmm. and then when you direct with the actors, you tell a story. But then in while editing, if you have a lot of material, you can change and you can actually then it then you are telling the story and deciding how it, it should be told. So it's it's kind of amazing how much you can change a story in the editing room if you have enough material. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So yeah. I think but, and, and I have been I've been working with the same uh, photographer or, or in all my sh shorts and that's also when planning um the shots you kind of you have a common understanding mm -hmm. how to do this so yeah exciting mm -hmm. in the editing room if you have good shots <laughs> to choose between <laughs> As a, I'm thinking also about like the way that there's sort of in camera or in screen editing, like with the eyeball up really close and like, <laughs> like, yeah. The, the, the... <laughs> and that was kind of uh, actually because he was he was in Finland, he was in Finland uh -huh. and we were in Norway. <laughs> so I was directing him online. <laughs> so uh, it was a new experience uh, as well. But it worked. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> uh, that was great. Yeah. Katya, thoughts on editing? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, from the beginning when I started to work with Sonia, the cinematographer, we knew we had to plan really well what shot sh should we take because it's all dialogue. There's not much really um, like have action visual action it's pretty much talking so we knew that um, we had to like kind of like uh, make the whole screen script into pieces like small sections and of this we should these two lines we should like shoot like this and these two like this and this and this and this we didn't do um never like a full run with only like a, like a master shot or take these sides and these sides, we just kind of put it to a small pieces mm. um, because there was so much dialogue. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, so it was interesting. We had to do a lot of planning. So when we put the um, whole thing into the edit, um, she kind of had to work with, we had a lot of a lot of images we had so much images which were like talking 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 and she had to work with these and there was really um, because it's so linear the the short film is so linear there is the beginning and the end and we cannot go anywhere from the studio because we don't have material from anywhere and the talk has to be linear we cannot kind of like go there and here and there so she had to work and it was funny, um, we figured out while we were editing this, um, that we noticed how like small changes mattered. Like if we put a second more silence on the beginning and took some silence from the end on, on one shot, it just mattered so much. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was kind of like um, true error, we found the, the rhythm of the editing. So yeah, it was it was actually a longer process uh, in the editing room that we first thought it would be. Mm -hmm. I love that you mentioned details because one of my favorite details in the film is like it it sheds it gives so much insight into the character when she just barely hangs up on the first caller. He's still talking and she's sympathetic, but you can tell that she's heard this story before or ones mm -hmm. like it, and she just. Yeah, she just hangs up just like a half a second where he's still walking. It's brilliant. Yeah, really, really lovely. So I know that we're coming up on time, but I, I have a selfish question. I actually have two more questions. Um, one question is about funding, because I'm really interested in sort of production in um, the Nordic region in general. And um, I know that in 
the Danish context, there's like new new Danish screen where they actually um, start developing projects by by producing a 10 to 15 minute sort of visual um, sketch of the larger project as opposed to developing it through um, through the, the um, screenwriting phase. Um, so I'm curious just in terms of like, what does the landscape look like for you in terms of producing future projects or like um, I know Amanda Chanel's, you know, Sami Blood started off as a short and then, but that it expanded into a feature length and it sounds like you're working with the same, is it the same concept also as, um, or this, like, is, is your feature related to the short? And so, so just generally questions about like, how, is, how easy is it these days to fund projects or, what does that landscape look like for you? Yeah, well, it's, no, my short film, beyond the fact that it's the two, two same actors and that it's about a relationship, it's not, it, they don't have anything in common really. And it's a different, deep, um, totally different story. But, um, and there's not this tradition. I remember this from studying in the state that there is like, yeah, a lot of people were making a short film that then was sort of like a prep, prepping for their feature and they extended it into a feature film, but there's not, there's not this tradition here in Iceland. Um, and somehow, I don't think I ever did this, but, uh, but that being said, you have to have made a short film to be able to get funding for a feature. And um, your short film has to have been shown at some festivals or on TV or, so, or something like it has to have had some kind of official coming out into the world process, even though those kind of um, distribution is changing so much that like these, you know, what that means is constantly changing. Um, but generally here, no, we, we actually, I, I, I think it would be great if we had this kind of new Danish screen model. And I, I know there is talk of, it's in the, how do you say it? It's like, it's, it looks like it, it might, yeah, it might happen here soon. And, and, and also just in general, different kinds of funding models, you know, like first feature slash experimental low budget film, and then something sort of medium budget, and then maybe like an expensive period film or, mm -hmm. but right now it's pretty, like when you apply to the film, Iceland Film Fund, which is kind of the only way that, I mean, there are people making films independently funded, but, but it's very difficult here. And it's, there's not much tradition for it. And it's not like in the States at all, where you have like, you know, a tradition and understanding of investors, you know, coming in and funding films. It's really mostly state funded by the Iceland Film Fund. And then if you're making a film that is, you know, not low, 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 low budget, then you generally need even more than what the film fund can give. So now you like with a Swan, which was still a relatively low budget film compared to Iceland, we had two other countries come on board as co for co-production and the same with my new feature um two other countries uh came on board and then somehow you're able to you know the me and the producers are able to puzzle puzzle it together financially mm -hmm. so this is kind of the model that's being used now and and that means that you know generally you are you you have to like you your crew is like a um, a mix of, of local people and people from the other countries where the funding came from. And um, yeah, so that's kind of, that's kind of how it is here. Okay. Katya, Zara? Uh, yeah, it's not easy. <laughs> um, uh, there is kind of like, um, um, well, for my uh, feature film, which might someday may become, I've gotten a grant for a screenwriting, for writing it, which is kind of like the first step you usually start in any production. If you get a funding for the writing, you might get a funding for the rest, but it's always, it's, it's still hard because especially I think now um, the, the whole kind of like, how how many applications they get for different projects has gone like 
up, up and up. So uh, I, I, I don't want to say it's a huge competition, but it is, you, you, there are so many good projects and so little get funding. Mm. But yeah, um, in, in this short film, we got funding from the, the, the Finnish Film Foundation, the YLE, the Finnish Broadcasting Company and the Promotion uh, Center for Audiovisual Culture, which are the ones you usually fund short films and and uh, mo most short films are then shown on Wiley, the broadcasting company. So um, I don't know, I cannot say yet about the funding of the feature films because I haven't gotten um, it, but, but, you know, I'm, I'm hoping it's just, you know, when, you get, when I get a, a grant for screenwriting, it kind of like says that there is potential, so. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping there is potential. Yeah, that's great. I hope that you like open the door and there's your funding. Mm. It's just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Me too. <laughs> Sarah, what's yeah, well, what's it, uh, yeah, it's it's hard to write uh, a, a script, but it's I think it's even harder to get funding. <laughs> so it's yeah, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think. Um, even though you your project is rejected, don't give up. Try over and over again. So yeah. So in all way, you can get um, writing grants from um, the Nor uh, Norwegian Film Institute and also from the Sami Film Institute and production grant also from the same institutions. So. But it's hard. But all, all my short films are produced by Mona Hul, and she is really good in doing low budget films. So all the short films are low budget films, really low budget films. So yeah. But uh, you can't see that on the on the on the result. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, working with a small crew, and yeah. So, and and I haven't not even been thinking of, of, of that, that first make a short film of the feature and then make the feature mm -hmm. because they are also different projects. So it's not possible, mm -hmm. but I've been lucky and having those, that uh, writing grant mm -hmm. that is, yeah, that's good. Great. Well, um, the last question is just sort of a, um, I'm curious, is there any, you, you've all been working these circuits, uh, film festival circuits, and is there anything that you wish people asked you about your work that they never do? <laughs> and if so, would you mind sharing what that might be? It feels so long that I was at a film festival that I... <laughs> I don't remember, um, but let me think for a minute, maybe, if somebody else wants to jump in. <laughs> maybe I'd like for someone to ask, like, genuinely, what do you love about films? Because I love talking about films, yes. and I love talking about the things I love about <laughs> films, but usually, usually it's just... Uh, yeah, it's more like superficial fissile talk, but I, I want to dig deep, you know, maybe. <laughs> but that's why that's why it's it's uh, we cannot dig deep in these Zoom conversations. So I wish we were in a festival. <laughs> I I think I actually, you know, talk about, you know, you were asking about production and funding and I mean we briefly went out over how it is with our in our countries, but and you both mentioned that it was so difficult and it's also very difficult here. And writing a screenplay, I mean, it's basically, you know, the screen, the grants that you can get to write a screenplay are in no way, you know, equivalent to, you know, covering living expenses during the time that you're writing the screenplay. So it's like, I'm, I'm actually always very cute because I'm also, you know, Right now, I, I have another job also working with this um, amazing uh, visual artist that I, I so I, I work as a director also on these visual visual, uh, visual art projects with 
with him, this collaborator that I've sometimes worked with. And, and right now that's like um, paying my, paying most of my bills. And I think that, um, I think that I would be curious sometimes to just know, like, how do you, like, how do you live? You know, like <laughs> I, I would want to know from a lot of other directors and I would be totally honest if somebody would ask me. And I mean, throughout the years, I've had to do so many other jobs just to, you know, be able to do this and, and like, you know, how do you live and why haven't you quit yet? Like is something that I, I think are <laughs> honest <laughs> I just, I just for, for financial reasons. And now I have like, you know, I have a kid and another one on the way and it's like, it's, it's always a struggle, but I would, I, I definitely wouldn't want to be doing anything else uh, in my life, but it's like, I, I, I'm just, I find myself being curious whenever I meet artists, like, and I'm always wondering, like, how do they live? How does he live? How does she live? You know, do they have, are they independently wealthy or do they have, you know, jobs that I don't know of, or, you know? <laughs> I don't have any, I don't know, I, I don't, I can't think of any question. Yeah. Sorry for being dull. No, 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 no. that's good. That's good. <laughs> um, so I don't, I know that we've gone over time and uh, I mean, there's a part of me that would love to ask like, how do you live and why haven't you quit yet? And like, what do you love about films? So I feel like we could talk forever, um, but I also maybe, want to maybe. Yeah. Maybe Katya's answer, Katya's an question answers my question. I was like, thinking that they were related. Like, yeah. so we have quit yet because we love cinema so too much. Yeah, maybe we could finish with just like a, a little snippet, Katya, about like, because I was curious, like, do you mean what do you love about watching films or about making films or like, are they yeah, or... yeah, well. I just love, I'm, now I'm talking about watching films. Mm. I just love the, the feeling you get when you're in a cinema and you watch something that just totally like blows your mind. I mean, uh, when I go to cinema, I usually buy candy and I know that it's been a good movie when I haven't eaten any of them. <laughs> I'm just so focused on what I see. Mm. I, I, I mean, like, it's just, after you leave, you leave, leave a movie theater and you're just like, that was so awesome. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. It's just the, the feeling. I love the feeling you get when you watch a really good movie. Mm. I love the feeling you get when you watch a movie that irritates you. Mm -hmm. I mean, like if it like makes you feel something, mm -hmm. I, I don't think there is any anything better than that even though it's an irritation or like why the that character is doing it? the characters were so stupid but it makes you feel something mm -hmm. I, I i think the the worst uh, reaction you can get uh, or feedback you can get for a movie is like me <laughs> that's the worst kind. it doesn't make you feel anything that is the worst kind of <laughs> feedback yeah. so it's just a feeling i love when I watch movies uh, and the feeling you get when you write a movie and you actually are enthusiastic about something you write yourself because I'm my own worst critic. Mm -hmm. So if I enjoy something I write, I know it's like, I love this and it's so unusual. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, now I'm just rambling, but yeah. <laughs> I think that, that it's wonderful. And I, I can say as a spectator that I had all of those experiences watching your three films of both like reacting and feeling and also like thinking that's one of my big pleasures with cinema is like if i'm if i walk away from it and i'm still thinking about it like how that happened or why that happened or so um yeah i really appreciate the work that you've contributed to this and i look forward to watching all of your future films and catching up on the ones previous ones that I haven't seen yet. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank, you. thank you from me. This was most amazingly fascinating to listen to. I really, really appreciate all your insight. And uh, I think um, it was uh, wonderful. So I want to thank all of you who are um, listening to this um, 
too. And I hope you enjoy our film festival and make sure to watch the Nordic shorts as uh, you will find them very intriguing, especially after you've listened to this uh, talk. So thank you. Thank you, Stina.